Hey guys, how's it going? It's the Crypto Analyst here, and I hope all of you guys are having a good morning, evening, wherever you guys are from. Welcome back to another Bitcoin technical analysis. And with Bitcoin hitting nearly a $14,000 peak the other day, the real question is to whether or not this is the top of Bitcoin or whether this recent fall was simply just the retracement that Bitcoin needed in order to continue heading higher from here. So today what I wanted to do is a full-on technical analysis of both the up and the downside, the bullish and the bearish case scenario as to what I believe Bitcoin is doing in the pivotal points that it needs to hold in order to stay bullish. So if you guys are interested, go and stick around for the video and do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button as it does help out the channel a lot. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into this. So yes, I do still have the fib retracement up here as I did in the video from a couple of days ago, as well as some of the EMAs, because these are going to be some pretty critical areas as to where I believe Bitcoin is going to need to hold if it wants to stay bullish. So with that being said, I'm going to talk about the bullish first because I think that's what the most people are interested in. And then we're going to talk about some of the bearish case scenarios that could be possible for Bitcoin. Now, I say that because as of right now, I am still bullish on Bitcoin. I think that the place that it's in as of currently is still a bullish one. And as long as it holds two, piv uh, excuse me, two pivotal points, uh, it's going to continue to be bullish. So for me, the first one is going to be the 200 EMA, the 200 EMA on Bitcoin. I mean, as long as we can have seen through this run ever since this crossed over the 200 EMA way back in February, it has not really fallen and stained below it. So um, from this point, what we can see over here is that this pinkish purple line over here is going to be the 200 EMA. And this thing is held ever since it crossed over in uh, February. What was it about February 8th? So of 2019. So we can see that every time that it's hit this area, it's just bounced off of it. Yes, you have had a little bit of piercing candle action, but for the most part, the 200 EMA on the four hour chart is is just this critical support that Bitcoin has been holding. Um, and it's not something that has really broken and stayed below yet. And I wouldn't expect it to um, as of yet either. So with Bitcoin continuing to head up over here in price, um, this is going to be my first major support that Bitcoin is going to get to. Now, it's very possible that this thing continues to just rally up from here. It doesn't even touch the 200 EMA for a very, very long time. We've seen it do that before. Again, looking at 2017, 2018, there is just extended periods of time where it's very possible that Bitcoin doesn't even touch the 200 EMA. And this isn't even something that's just in Bitcoin. I mean, you can have seen this in stocks and other stuff as well, where when something goes too parabolic, you know, it just won't even touch the some of the higher moving averages for an extended period of time. Now, that is my major one. But again, it doesn't, it, you know, necessarily speaking, it doesn't have to touch this. It could just continue upwards from here, especially if this is the new market cycle. There's a very good chance that, you know, Bitcoin's still in a bull market right now. There's no saying that it isn't. Just because it had its first real rejection in this bear market from this $14,000 point doesn't mean that everything's all of a sudden bearish. Now, is this a local top? Absolutely. Uh, excuse me. Absolutely. It is a local top. But uh, what this doesn't mean is that this isn't just the end of Bitcoin. I think it's silly to see that one pullback happens and all of a sudden everyone's bearish saying this is the end of Bitcoin. It's going back down to 3K. It's going back down to 1K. I definitely think that it's way, way too early to actually say anything like that. So with that being said, let's talk about the second point, And that is going to have to actually do with the fib retracements. Now, measuring this from top to bottom of this rally, from the bottom of this so-called bear market to the top of this um, bull market, um, what I'm going to do is actually be looking at the 618 FIB retracement level because that is a critical level in any chart because this is known as the golden FIB in something that's used just so, so often in Bitcoin. I mean, anyone who's a part of Bitcoin and uses FIB retracements, you would know that the 618 is called the golden FIB for a reason because it's used just so, so often. Now, the cool part about this is it actually lines up with some technical uh, support and slash resistance. What was previously resistance is now going to be support. And that would be at the $7,250 or $7,260 level. This whole area in here is going to be the 618 FIB uh, support, which is going to be an important one for me to hold. Now, if we start breaking down below this, um, there are other supports to be down here. However, I would start to be a little bit more skeptical if Bitcoin breaks this 7,200 level um, and, and continues downwards from here. So that is... I guess kind of the worst case scenarios for Bitcoin, I guess as to where that it can bounce from, those are the critical supports that I see that Bitcoin needs to hold. I don't think that either of those are going to break. 
um at least not as of any time soon there's no reason to believe that as of yet bitcoin is still on its way back up it did have a beautiful retracement over here um as you can see from the candle flipping on the four hour coming back down it's going to be kind of one of those pivotal areas where we're going to have to watch but i mean there's no reason to be bearish as of yet um bullish in a bull market and any kind of dips and retracements are uh but seeing as a buying opportunity in a bull market in my opinion um, if we look over here to the left, one of the things that I want to highlight is that over here in the previous bull market or in the previous uh, parabolic market cycle of Bitcoin might be a better way to say it, actually, um, that there was plenty of just massive retracements over here all the way up. I mean, we looked at ones that were all the way from around five thousand dollars all the way back down to around, you know, in the 2000s and then we have other ones that went all the way up from 7000 you know nearly $8,000 and then came back all the way to around $5,500 another retracement that went from around 11,500 all the way back down to 8,600 and these were all just buying the dip opportunities on Bitcoin um, even bigger ones over here I mean th this is something that is a very common occurrence in Bitcoin so you cannot be too bearish because again there was numerous amounts of these retracements all the way up to nearly twenty thousand dollars over here so with us actually seeing a first real retracement over here on this side of Bitcoin is it not just a the first retracement in a series of ones that could be leading Bitcoin to a new all-time high and that's really the way that I'm looking at this right now I think people are so used to the last year and a half they've been so accustomed to shorting and to being bearish on Bitcoin that they've forgotten just how bullish um, this thing can actually be and so taking a step back and looking at this from a macro chart um, you know it's one of those things where you kind of just have to take the step back you have to look at this from an unbiased opinion you have to look at this from an, uh, from more so of a historical technical standpoint more so than anything else oh <laughs> excuse me more so than anything else um, and one of the other things that I did want to highlight here is that on this four hour chart yesterday, I mean, there has just been historic levels. Someone brought up the fact they said, you know, there is no volume in this thing. Um, historically, you know, this is horrible. The volume is falling off, which is actually not the case. So um, if, on Bitcoin, if we're, we're just going to kind of measure this out so we can get a good idea over here. It's all the way up to around the four thousand dollar period. So I'm just going to keep this here as we actually scroll over. So scrolling all the way over here, what we can see is that Bitcoin hadn't seen this level of, of volume almost ever in its entire history over here. And if we go, I mean, this was a, a just a pure historic level of volume. And if we go, so it's around 2,770, um, moving that all the way over here, I mean... Again, yeah, so almost record level settings of volume, as we can see. I'm not sure if you guys can see this too well on screen, but basically just pointing this out that Bitcoin hadn't seen this volume since its peak in December of 20, uh, what was it? December of 2017. I almost thought it was 18 for a sec. Um, <laughs> but basically, the argument that there is no volume in this thing is just something that you can't really argue. I mean, when you have, just again, let's see if we can actually get this on the daily. We might actually even be able to see it better from here. But um, something that we can see is that there was nearly a all-time high record if not an all-time high. So just under the all-time high uh, record of volume on Bitcoin the other day, um, really actually being today and yesterday, setting new records of volume for this year and of last year. The last time that we've seen volume like this was in the heart of the peak of Bitcoin at just about $20,000. So if we're already hitting those records right now, the question is, can it push higher than this? I think the answer is going to be yes and short. I didn't want that to be too confusing. I kind of drugged that out a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, just kind of comparing the volume over here. But here on the daily, scale that you can clearly see that it's you know competing for the second if not the third highest or really the third and fourth highest level of volume that bitcoin's seen in its history something that is important you can literally just click on a daily scale on you know any exchange and see that quite clearly so what are the potential to the downside if actually Bitcoin does fail out of here? I've already talked about the potential to the upside again. I think that the potential to the upside here is, again, this, this first of all, the $17,000 peak, then uh, working its way into this $20,000 area, which is its previous high. Beyond that, you know, I think $30,000, $50,000 are going to be some of my price targets. I know that that is um, a little bit conservative for some of you, and it's just a little bit too bullish for others. So... You know, that is my, honestly, that's just my honest personal estimation as to where it can go. Because once it gets past resistance, really the sky's the limit from there. Because there is no form of resistance stopping it from going up besides just psychological barriers. And that's where I have mine at.
Um, the other point is to the downside of Bitcoin. I think that if it does actually end up breaking this 200 EMA and even more so this 50 EMA, I think that it's coming back down to this 618. Now, this is on the one day time scale, so it's not entirely with the one that I was looking at earlier. But this 200 EMA is going to be around 9,300 and really, really more so of $9,400. And this is going to be the first support. If this one breaks, I think it's coming right down to the golden fib of the 618 area around 7,200. Below this, you're going to have support around this $6,500 area. And below this, you know, it's going to start getting a little bit scary because that's where you start getting into this $5,500 area. And below that, you have the $4,200 area, which was the start of this entire thing being this giant ascending triangle that formed on Bitcoin that ultimately led to a beautiful breakout and the start of this rally to the upside that has just been absolutely massive. Uh, and parabolic as we know it. So recapping this over here, guys, I think that the overall, you know, just of this is, is that maybe it did reach a profit taking area. I know a lot of people that are very bullish on Bitcoin, but they still took profits because they recognize that this thing was potentially getting ready to locally top out. I'm still bullish on Bitcoin from here on out. Again, I have my kind of areas that I think Bitcoin needs to hold if it wants to stay bullish for me. But, you know, there are going to be profit taking areas in every market. And just because you take profits on something doesn't mean that you're necessarily too bearish on of the long term. All of that that means is that when you hear people taking profits, I mean, one of my mentors was taking profits on Bitcoin and kind of working his way in the altcoins because he saw Bitcoin as just a great area to, you know, take profit out of and then re-enter in later. And so what this means is that while you might not be bearish on it, so to say, you think that you could get it at a better price. So selling it at a high and then maybe buying it back at a lowering a lower opportunity, um, what that allows you to do is to take a guaranteed profit, especially in something that has been as volatile to the upside as Bitcoin has been, it wasn't a bad idea to take profits in here. So you are probably going to continue to see some people take profits. However, after their a nearly $3,500 retracement on Bitcoin, you know, pretty substantial. I mean, I was looking at Bitcoin yesterday down nearly 21%. Um, you get to a point where the opposite happens. And then you have people actually so many people selling off this you know, you have a large amount of people who see this as a great buying opportunity. And then you have the opposite of people taking profit. You have people actually buying back into a certain point. So as funny as this could have been, this could have been like a one to two day swing trade on Bitcoin that could have literally been 20% uh, with no leverage. So Bitcoin has a lot of opportunity in it. I'm still bullish as long as, long as it holds these pivotal areas. This is actually where I'm uh, looking into maybe get into some low leverage positions or maybe even to, um, you know, buy, buy, I guess just more Bitcoin from there. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you guys did hit that like and subscribe button, I want to know what your guys thoughts are on this in the comment section below. Are you guys bullish on Bitcoin? Is this the top or is this simply just the retracement that Bitcoin needs to head further? Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video.